Hello, this is the pastors. Um, I want to start today with talking about a uh, a dream that a young lady had at church. Uh, she said she was dreaming about a cross and she was uh, afraid this cross was going to fall on her and a lot of other things. I don't know everything. Uh, I didn't hear all the dream. I have to hear the whole thing to know what uh, the Lord is saying about it. But uh, this is to pastors. I want to encourage pastors to follow after the will of God. Uh, don't just follow a religious spirit. Listen, the most charismatic thing that walks into your door is not what the church is needing. Uh, yeah, we can be charismatic. The, the Holy Ghost makes us charismatic. But uh, we really need to follow after that the spirit of the Lord in this. Not... You know, the devil has a char charisma about him. The Bible talks about in the last days, uh, says the Antichrist, he'll be like that one that will cause the whole world to follow after him. Just like with Hitler, they're going to have charisma and they're going to cause people to follow after them. And uh, uh, the book of James, uh, the Lord through the James here, he, he talked about uh, this religious spirit and this young lady's dream was obviously about a, a religious spirit and we'll get into more of that here in just a little bit and uh, it says uh, James 2 and 1 it says my brethren have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ the Lord of glory with respect to persons for if there come unto you your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel and there come also a uh, poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Verse 4 Are ye not uh, then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken to my beloved brethren. It says, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not uh, rich men uh, oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? Now look back up there where it says um, um, verse 5 God has chosen the poor of this world uh, rich in faith, heirs of the kingdom. Now John the Baptist was such a man. Uh, most churches today, if John the Baptist came in the front door, they would quickly get him out the back uh, just by the way that he looked. A man come in wearing old poor beat up clothes and that's that's exactly what he was you know the poor people wore animal skins in those days you know poor folks today they wear blue jeans and uh, old dirty tennis shoes and uh, a shirt much like this one I've got on today now look you know when I dress up when I go and preach now don't get excited about stuff like that because I, I'm respectable to uh, respectful to the house of God um, and uh, the Lord has uh, promised to bless me now uh, but riches and pride is is one thing that will kill a church. I've seen so many pastors that uh, they want to put the most prestigious men right to the front and pay more attention to people that can look good and uh, the ones that can talk good. But I've seen some I've seen some good things come out of some people that you would never think could do hardly anything for God. Uh, some of the greatest singers are people that look like they can't even sing at all uh, in the churches. No, they don't look like a flashy movie star, you know. Uh, I don't look like much, but I can sing pretty good, fairly decent, you know, I'd say. I've had a couple of people that asked me to make a tape even for them, but, uh, um, you know, one of these days I might get around to that if God leading. But now, I know a, a, another church where um, all they want to do is sing. I went to this church and I talked to this pastor and I wanted to tell his assembly about the last days and boy he couldn't get me out there quick enough. You know I had a dream about this uh, uh, one church and I 
I've told the pastors about it and I uh, don't want to mention any names but you know I, I know a, a few pastors and, and they know me as well and I preach in some of their churches and I was even a pastor for seven years myself and uh, this in this dream I had this about this church so I, I went up there to, uh, to preach and to sing and and uh, and all of a sudden in the dream there was a door formed with glass doors and an outside and a uh, it was like a, a foyer leading to the outside uh, in the back after they got me through this door and they just they just closed me out now look even though I was on the pulpit still they had closed me out and uh, that's a religious spirit that's doing that uh, when I'm when I'm reading the scripture sometimes uh, Christians and pastors alike they will all of a sudden they turn on that, that uh, religious spirit ear they won't hear the Word of God but they look for the prestige in what you're trying to say can this man impress me can this man make me uh, uh, stand up and say whoa boy this this fellow's really got something going here and it's not me whether I've got something going listen you need to have something going in Jesus that's going to make the difference amen that's going to make all the difference in the world uh, whether we win souls or not yeah now we can get a big crowd look at the, that church down in Texas with 10,000 members of, uh, of people there but you know what I'm, I'm willing to say that I bet you 90% of that church won't make it to heaven because all the man does is preach blessed, blessed, blessed. And God will bless you. But he's preaching a half-truth. The half-truth is not truth at all. The half-truth will only get, up to, get you up to the door. It won't get you in the door, but it'll get you up to the door. Uh, you have to make the rest of the step. You have to go all the way and get, all, and get the whole thing to have truth. Go there in uh, Psalms 1 and 1. I quoted before where the Bible says blessed is the man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly and uh, that church down there they don't preach that if they preach that nobody come back the next Sunday but that's the truth that's God's truth the Bible says in Revelation it says uh, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I have overcame and sit with my father in his throne they want to teach you that there's no overcoming down here and that's a religious spirit that's not truth and we need a whole truth in order to make it to heaven. Jesus is not half truth. He is all truth. Amen. And we need him to get into heaven. And uh, now I want to uh, finish interpreting this dream here, if I may, uh, to the part that God has said to me about it anyway. Um, this is a religious spirit. I want to say to this young lady that God is speaking to you about a religious spirit. A uh, religious spirit is a huge, heavy cross. No man can bear it, and it, it'll crush him. Uh, it'll crush him to powder, and you'll you'll be suffering. You'll be drinking of that uh, of that spirit all the days of your life. You'll drink from a bitter cup. God doesn't want us to have a bitter cup. He wants us to have a sweet cup. Amen. That's the Lord Jesus. And now listen to what this says. Uh, the Lord was talking about this. Uh, thing about being crushed and he said uh, if you go over to Luke 20 verse 17 it says it says and he beheld them or he looked upon them and said what is this then that is written the stone which the builders rejected the same has become the head cornerstone the Lord of course was talking about himself there he is the head cornerstone of, of the church amen and verse 18 says and Whosoever shall fall upon this stone shall be broken. And that's what the Lord wants this young lady to do. He wants this young lady to fall upon him. He doesn't want to have this huge, heavy uh, religious thing fall upon her and crush her. Uh, but he wants her to fall upon him and not this religious spirit. Don't lean on that. Listen, if some of your family's uh, telling you this might be okay or that might be okay, um, as far as uh, religion goes, uh, no, you get into your Bible, you find out what God, the Bible, the Bible says that, let us work out our own way between us and the Lord with fear and trembling. That's exactly what God's saying to you, uh, that you need to find out. Don't just listen to what uh, Grandma says, and don't just listen to what uh, uh, the pastor says, even though that might be a good thing, you know. 
uh, what's good for them may not be good between you and the Lord. And it could even uh, lead you to doing um, uh, tradition. And tradition killed the Lord, you know. Uh, the, the transgression of tradition was what uh, the elders got so upset about and took Jesus to the cross for. That's a religious spirit. Okay? And listen what it says. Whosoever, in verse 18, again I'm talking, shall uh, fall upon this stone, shall be broken. The Lord wants us to have a broken and a contrite heart to come before Him in that manner and fashion and stay that way. Don't ever get out of that. But listen to what this says. But upon whomsoever it shall fall, this stone shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Isn't that interesting? He was referring to something Moses said way back over here in Exodus. Verse 32 um, and 19 it says, And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto this camp. Talking about Moses when he came down the hill and he saw that calf and the dancing of the people. And Moses' anger waxed hot, the Bible said. And he cast the tables out and his hands um, and, and break them beneath the mouth. And look what it says, verse 20. And he took the calf which they had made and burned it with fire and ground it into powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel to drink of it. And that's what the Lord's leading you to know is that there's a difference between being religious and really knowing the Lord Jesus. Amen. Go find out who the Lord is in your heart. Have a relationship between you and Him. Let nobody else in it. Nobody else. Amen. That's what the Lord's telling you to do. Uh, not even your husband. Your husband doesn't even have anything to do between the, uh, the relationship between you and the Lord. Amen. Um, now I want to talk about uh, something else here. How much time do I have left? Um, I'm uh, I'm I'm reading a letter real quick. Um, Thirteen minutes. You okay, and uh, I've got a couple minutes left here. Uh, I wrote this letter to a, a pastor or to an evangelist friend of mine uh, that I don't know personally, but a friend of mine does. So he says he does. Um, and uh, I just want to make an appeal to uh, the pastors out there let me come and preach at your church and I want to say this to you as I've said to him it says I'm not going to try to butter you up by telling you a bunch of things that are not so or even stress the truth but God has told me to step out and do what you're doing that is evangelist work of my friend here uh, for the last days God has called me for the last days I have no idea uh, how to start I'm needing a lot of help I'm using the best of my intellect uh, to do what I believe God wants me to do. I know He wants me to start in the state of Ohio and work my way to Virginia and, and all across America and eventually and settle in the state of California. I know that uh, He's not a pastor. I'm sending this letter. I'm giving to all this letter to all pastors. I can, uh, I can get a, a address, uh, an address of, sorry about my grammar. Um, any kind of help would be a, uh, received with open arms. And endorsement will be tremendous. As I get ready to close here now, I know you're busy for God, you pastors and, and Brother Thompson here as well. As uh, Not to bother you too much, please pray for my wife and I. I'm Steve. My wife is Joyce uh, for our journey into the unknown. And God bless you for that. And uh, I want to put a P.S. If you know a surefire way of getting church doors open, please let me know. I want to get out and do this work for the Lord until he comes. And if you get a letter from me, please consider it. I love you and I thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.